Good morning, everybody. Um, yesterday, I was asked how to make magnified circles on top of a tangle. Um, they're not really magnified. You don't really draw the picture bigger. Um, it's an optical illusion, just like the shading creates that 3D effect. When you shade the circles, you get the same 3D effect. Um, today, I am, for the sake of time, I already drew one out. Um, this is the Tangle Pattern Pickpocket. Very easy to do. Um, creates a really cool background. So, I thought we would go ahead and use it because of the lines. I think it's going to give a good example. Um, my paper I'm using today is my Strathmore Artist Tiles. They are, I believe they're like $7.99 on Amazon. Um, you can also get that in watercolor. And you can get it in, um, I think they have black tiles and I don't remember what the other one is, but there's several of them and none of them are more than like $9, I would say. I love the, I love this one because for $7.99, you get 70 pieces of paper. So it's a really good bargain. Um, I'm using my number nine graph gear pencil. You can use whatever pencil that you like to shade with. I am using a white Signo Uniball. Um, I'm going to have to get a different white because that one appears to be just about out of ink, which happens a lot here at this house. Okay. And a blender. Whatever kind you want. I like these little tiny number ones. Um, they do really good for fine detail. So, um, I have a bunch of those laying right on my desk. They're really hard, so you can take a sandpaper board, just like this one that I've been sharpening a pencil on, and you just pull the paper off the top, and you have a, a clean sheet, and then you can clean these right off. And make a nice fine new point on there. So anytime you buy your blenders, now we've got a brand new clean point to start with. Um, I also got these on Amazon. They're Creative Mark. Uh, maybe like $5.99 for a package of them. I, I don't really remember the price on them, but I'll put a link in there. I think there's like a dozen or so of them in a package, but being able to Shopping them like that. Um, I think I got the sandpaper pad at Hobby Lobby maybe, but I'll look one up on Amazon and put a link there for you to the, that too. Um, these hard ones come in all sizes. So they go everywhere from, you can get them from a one to a number five for really big shading. So um, as you can see, they're really hard, uh, really, really packed so that you can sharpen them. And those come in really handy. And you don't waste, like, the little flimsy paper ones. I feel like the tips bend so bad, so I don't even buy those anymore. Okay, so first we're going to outline our pre-made circles. I used a lid. <laughs> to make my circles. I cannot find my circle template that I have and I didn't want holes in my paper so today we're just going to trace a lid on here. I like to, I could have done this in pen and saved myself the time, but I really like making my circle and then just tracing the line because well, I don't necessarily want an absolutely perfect one. 
I want it to kind of look a little bit like I worked at it. Um, I bet right now in this particular shot you can see my mess up in my tangle right there. Um, I have a very good little sanded eraser. I don't know if you can see the sparkles in it. This end is sanded and will erase ink. Um, not very good on this really thin paper though. The colored dots on this are Jelly Roll gel pen. You could use anything you wanted there. Thing that you put inside of circle naturally gives you your eye for whatever reason wants to magnify it as you can see we haven't done anything yet and it already kind of has an appearance that it's magnified even though it's really not it's just flat so you wouldn't want to draw a circle and then make your pattern bigger inside of that, that would take a lot of time and you'd have to get it really right to be able to do that. So this lead is really soft in this pencil and I love it for shading. Um, you want to lay down this edge to be darker than you might normally because we're going to work that out. You want to kind of shade in a circle towards the center because we just want the edges to be shaded. And you don't want a whole lot of it. That's about as thick as you need it on there. And as you bring it out, you want to make it a little bit lighter. So up against the black a little darker and bring it out lighter. This is going to give you that bubble effect and make it look like a drop of water on there. And when you're doing this kind, your light source is going to kind of be straight on this way. Take your little blender and you're just going to start working that out a little bit. Are you seeing it? And now you want to kind of put a little shadow on the outside edge to make it look like it's floating off the paper a little bit. And wherever you have this little shadow, right here on the outside, you're going to put your light mark on the other side of that. Right 
think I got that a little too thick. Um, you want to have a good separation between. Between your inside area and your outside area. We're going to make this shadow a little bit darker on top. And the shadow down there. And then you want to put your put your highlight over here. Just like that. And it's not really magnified, but it looks magnified. Um, you can also because. If the light is coming through here, you kind of get a little down on this area. And that is all you have to do to make a magnified. It's a very good optical illusion that is super, super easy to do. And it makes a really, whoops, makes a really cool effect on your, finished product. This pencil, when I use it, I don't know if you can see that, it gets a really sharp point and a really flat edge. And if I can keep that flat edge down, it gives me a really good, uh, I don't know, good line to be able to, it's so soft, you just barely have to touch the paper. I didn't put as much shading in this one. I, mean, I felt like I had a little too much in that last one. Just bring this towards the middle. This edge right here to be a little bit darker. I'll go back in and add a little bit darker here. And I'm just going to use what's on my pencil for this shadow because I don't want to get too much on there. I mean on my blender. I don't want too much down there. But you do want that to look like it's kind of on top of the and now I'm gonna add your light source up here. Just a little one down here. And then I'm going to do this last one. Turn it all the way around. Um, if you put your hand on this while you're working on this, you're going to smear your pencil. So try not to uh, lay your hand on there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this darker because I know that I'm going to want this edge darker. I'll just put a little bit more on there to start with. And as you can see, it doesn't matter that you've already shaded your... Um, if you've already shaded your tangle, you're not going to... 
You're not going to mess it up by doing this. That just adds to it. Another thing you can do is right here where this, you can make a little bit of a white mark in your shading there um, because that light's kind of filtering through your, if you have a really little eraser, which this one is really big and not really made for that. but. And there you go. That's that's how you make it. It is totally an optical illusion. Nothing in there is actually bigger. Um, just a really cool effect. It's all in the shading, just like this 3D look. They make that a 3D look too. So I hope this video helped you figure out how to do that. I hope it made it easier. I wish I had a thinner eraser for that. Maybe this edge right here. That little light source right there needs to uh, brighten up just a little bit. And that's how you do it. Um, thanks for joining me today. I will put all the links in the description of the video. Um, give this tangle a try. It's really fun. It's, you just put uh, dots and then dots and then you just do like you would for Huggins. You just go the opposite direction and then this line is opposite of this line. So, really easy one. Um, have a good day. Thank you.